going on everybody it's your girl bubbles and welcome back to my first military monday video i used to have these videos all the time on my channel and then i was like you know what let me just switch on my channel and i ended up deleting all of my military videos you guys i had so many and i instantly regretted it once i was like dang i'm gonna go back to military content so this is gonna be our first of many military monday videos and as you guys can tell by the title this is going to be about things I wish I knew before I joined the military. So we're gonna go ahead and just dive into this video. The first thing that I wish I'd have known before I joined the military is the barracks. Now I got lucky in a sense, I don't live in the barracks, but I've been lucky in the sense that when I was stationed in Germany, I had my own room. I got lucky because I have some friends that have an open room and their privacy is separated by like a wall locker. I'm gonna try to find a picture or like a clip to show you guys what I mean. But it's basically like imagine this room that I'm in right now and then where the TV is, there'd just be like a little wall locker, maybe like this wide separating you guys so you have no type of privacy if you're somebody that isn't like you know like showing off your goods or like you don't like people staring at you or if you just want your man to come over and y'all just do you no type of privacy to do that you either got to get hotel rooms or you gotta tell your roommate like hey someone's -so coming over around this time can you not be there and if i would have been stuck in that situation you guys i probably would have been so hurt so hurt but i wasn't so but that's one thing that i really wish that i knew another thing is quitting i haven't reached the point besides during one of these field cycles in my military career i'm not gonna say exactly which one but there has been a field cycle where i was outside sleeping in sheep poop i was sleeping in sheep poop like on a sleeping bag and that was one of those moments where i was like you know what i i'm not doing this i am done going back to this company everybody can f off I'm done, I don't care. Then I realized, can't do that. You can't just wake up one day and just be like, you know what, I don't wanna do this anymore. Because you signed a contract, so you're basically stuck. Now there are ways you can get out. A wall, do not recommend. Um, medically discharged. If you get pregnant, they can discharge you. I don't know what that chapter is called. There's a chapter something. I need to figure out what chapter that is, but it's basically like saying you want to get out because you're pregnant and like being in the service is just not working out for you. You also get chapped out on a family care plan, meaning you don't have nobody to take care of your kids if you have to deploy or if you have to go to the field and stuff like that. It's another reason to get chaptered out. There's a lot of ways to get chaptered out, but it's a process. It's not like you just wake up one day and you're like, you know what? I'm sick. Go ahead and medically discharge me. Like it's a process. I've seen some people in that thing for like a year and a half and they're still going through it and i'm just like bro at this point you might as well just ride your contract out but at the same time it's gonna benefit them in the long run because they're gonna get paid once they get out and so on and so forth so that's my number two number three all y'all deploy everybody can deploy you are not safe just because you work behind a desk just because you're a cook just like nothing no 42 alphas which is hr no 92 golfs which is a cook no 92 yankees which is supply like me nobody is safe even photography is an mos still got it. like everybody is able to deploy doesn't mean you're gonna be out there killing people and as soon as you get off that plane you're gonna die but you are able to deploy so if anybody tells you you can't deploy because I thought I wasn't gonna, I haven't deployed yet, but now that I'm in here and I'm told like, hey, like I just missed the rotation that my company went on because I was on maternity leave. And I'm like, bro, if I hadn't been on maternity leave, I'd have been deployed right now. You know what I mean? And rotations, deployments, all that stuff is basically kind of like the same thing, but it just depends on where you go. Like if I go on a rotation in Germany, I'd probably be pretty lit. Rather than going on a rotation to Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan, something like that, I'd probably be like, okay, bro, hold up. Like there's a possibility that your girl could, you know what I mean? But that's what I signed up for and it is what it is. Another thing that everybody is just so fooled about. For some reason, y'all think us military people are rich. I don't know why. I don't know who told y'all we out here balling and rolling in dough. Yes, we have nice houses. Yes, we have nice cars. Yes, it just depends on your way of living. Now, there's some people that are in the military that are broke as hell. I mean, they ain't got no money. And that's because they got a, they're E1. They got a Camaro. They got all this extra stuff, Apple, everything, like all their stuff is high, high tech, high luxurious, and they spend all their money on literally that. It's usually the single soldiers or the privates that are usually more wild with money. People like myself are a little bit more responsible and like right now I live on post because the BAH out here in Texas, well at Fort Bliss, I don't know about Hood and Fort Sam Houston, but at Fort Bliss our BAH is only like $1,200. I have 
three kids and a husband. So that's four other people plus myself that I have to have in a house. I can't afford to be in a three bedroom house. I mean, I could, I could put the boys in one room, Khaleesi in a room, and then me and my husband. But I just feel like that's just not enough space. I don't want all of us on top of each other. So off post, a four bedroom house, probably like $1,500. So the BAH doesn't even match up, which is something that needs to be fixed. So I don't know whoever watches this video if you see this. The BAH in Fort Bliss, the cost of living, and the housing out here is not matching. That's the problem. But yeah, we're not making money like that. Y'all can literally tell by my rank right here. I'm a specialist. Y'all can literally go on Google and see how much money I make my rank, my duty station, all that stuff. Like it's not a secret, but we're not out here rolling in dough. I don't know why people think people in the military are like so rich. It's a regular job. Of course, we have different opportunities to make more money. Like we go TDY and stuff like that. But if you don't have like, usually it's a high speed MOS or like you're in a place where there's constantly missions that need to be done. You're not getting no extra TDY pay. So yeah, we're not rich guys. Also, you do not get to choose your duty station. Some of those recruiters be talking to you and saying like, oh, you, you, you wanna go to Florida? Yeah, we got you, you gonna go to Florida. You're not going to Florida. Like, you're not gonna go to Florida. Everybody has a wish list when you go to basic training that tells you the three in-state places out of your top picks for duty stations and then your three top places for like overseas duty stations. Now, I got lucky. My top overseas duty station was Germany and that was my first duty station. I chose that and I got it. I honestly believe that was just because of luck. I do not believe that I got that because I looked at my paper and they were like, you know what? Let's go ahead and send her there. They do not care. I just feel like I got lucky. It's literally like you have, think about it. You got thousands of people that are looking for a duty station that need to be put somewhere. They're not sitting down all day trying to figure out who wants to go where, who wants to go there. Oh no, we can't send this person. No, you're going to get sent where you're going to get sent. So that little wish list you put on when you go to basic training and all that stuff, cross your fingers that you get what you ask for, but keep in the back of your mind, this is BS and I'm 99.9% .9 sure they're gonna send me somewhere else. Hopefully you don't have to go to like Fort Polk or Fort Drum or nothing, you get somewhere decent like Fort Stewart or like Fort Bliss, it's decent here, you know what I mean? But don't let them trick y'all, okay? Cause they, they sneaky. Lastly, this one was really big for me and I got so lucky that my recruiter was not a scammer. If the MOS, which is the job that you want is not available when you go to your recruiter, you don't have to take another job. Like, let's say when I went, I wanted to be a 92 Yankee, I wanted to be supply, I love my MOS, I don't plan on ever reclassing so far, I'm not like traumatized yet. But my recruiter, when I was seeing stuff, I was like, oh, I could be a cook. He was like, no, you do not wanna be a cook, the schedule sucks, this and this. I was like, maybe a police officer? Do not be an MP. Like, my recruiter was so real with me. He was like, if you're gonna do anything, be a 42 Alpha or a 92 Yankee or a 92 92 Alpha and I was like you know what I'm gonna be a 92 Yankee because Yankees like work in companies and stuff Alphas work at warehouses and stuff and I just wasn't trying to work at a warehouse and do all that so I was like I want to be around people and yeah you know so if they tell you your MOS is not available you do not have to choose another one at that moment they don't have it there mine was not there when I wanted it I went back a month later it was there we checked he checked every single day for me hey there's no open spots yet there's no open spots yet boom I found an open spot cool sign me up that was literally my process and before you choose your job as well do your own research because a lot of people will tell you stuff like my recruiter was telling me stuff but a part of me trusted him because he was really like now nah, this is BS this is BS do this do this do this and I already did my research on being a Yankee and I know people that are Yankees that are in the army and I'm pretty satisfied right now make sure you ask people in the same branch as you and make sure you do your own research because knowledge is power and if you know stuff and you know what you're signing up for and you know what you're doing you'll be 100% okay you ain't got to worry about nothing else and when you join the military you will not have an instant regret once you leave AIT also I knew that was the last one but AIT listen I don't know if it's still like this I graduated from basic training in 2018 but my AIT for being a 92 Yankee did not help me at all for what I'm doing right now. Literally, you guys, nothing I learned in AIT has helped me with my job right now. I've had to learn everything from people, like my leadership, my sergeants that have been like in charge of me. I didn't learn nothing in AIT. I mean, I learned stuff, but everything that we learned, we have not implemented any of that right now as a soldier. So they need to do better on the 92 Yankee AIT because a lot of soldiers are being set out. I got lucky and then get put in my own supply room because if that had been the case, I would be screwed right now because I literally did not learn anything there. So know your research, learn your job to the best of your ability and all y'all be okay.
Um, besides that, I think those are like my main things that I wish I knew before I joined the military. Now that I'm in, no regrets, but I wish somebody had told me some of this stuff before I had joined because like they just be trying to set people up for failure. No, no disrespect to the recruiters because one day I might be a recruiter, but I don't want to be that recruiter. Like you got to tell people the truth and what it is. If they still want to join, cool. And if they don't, they don't. That's why I keep saying, y'all, I got lucky with my recruiter because he didn't give me no type of BS. He didn't give me no lies, none of that. He was real straight up. This is what it is. Like if you still want to join after this, you still have to wake up at 6.30 for PT. Well, earlier, you have PT at 6.30, so you still have to wake up hella early, even after basic and AIT, but you do get a lot more freedom after that. Like, AIT and basic is basically prison. After that, like, if you want to spend the night places on Friday nights, you can. You don't have to be on base 24-7. You don't have to shop on base. You don't have to eat on base. You don't have to do anything that involves the military once you're out of basic and AIT. So, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. I hope I didn't miss anything. If you guys ever have any more questions or anything that you guys think I forgot, go ahead and drop it down, leave it in the comments. So like I said, I hope I covered everything. Yeah, I think I covered everything. I hope you guys enjoyed my first Military Monday video. This is so much fun. I am gonna be having a new backdrop soon. I was planning on like ordering a flag off Amazon so that all my military videos are in the same background and stuff like that because I just don't, I'm in my guest room right now and I'm kind of just like, I don't know. I just don't think I'm feeling it filming here. So. We're gonna see. This is, like I said, first out of many Military Monday videos. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until then, thank you guys all once again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see y'all next time with the next video. Peace.